Hello, my name is Adam, and while I am a member of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, these opinions and ideas are my own, but I encourage you to seek by study and also by faith. Uh, seek out of the best books of wisdom, knowledge, learning, listen to the Spirit, meditate, go to the temple, pray, ask Heavenly Father if some of these things that I'm sharing uh, are not true, and um, if we are really in the last days, which I believe we are. So I'm going to continue on my prior video about Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, and the 1290 days. Um, just as a brief recap, um, here is the 1290 days. You've got 26 of March, 2020. All temples worldwide were closed. You add 1290 days, you get the 7th of October, 2023. That's the day Jerusalem was attacked. Israel was attacked. Um, I believe that's the fulfillment of Daniel 12.11. I think there'll probably be multiple fulfillments of this. Um, this is one of them. And then in verse 12, it says uh, something to the effect of, Blessed is he who cometh and arriveth at the 1335 days and waiteth on the Lord. You subtract the two and you get 45 days. So I think in the next 45 days from the 7th of October Till the end, which is going to be 21st of November, 2023, we're going to see some interesting and marvelous changes. Uh, you break that into two units uh, of 30 days each, um, and you have a half unit and a one unit of 15 days and 30 days. In um, Hebrew, I understand they would take a number like 13 and say 10 and 3. 10 plus 3 equals 13. They don't have a word for 13. And so you get this idea of a 30 and a 15, and you get a 45 days. So 15 days after the 7th of October precisely is October 22nd, 2023, the date of this recording. First ever worldwide church youth testimony meeting, never been done before. That's a sign uh, of something significant to continue to happen um, between now and the 45 days, 21st of November, 2023. Oh, and by the way, there is a scripture in DNC 8888 and also the prior in the next verse, 87 and 90, which mention to the effect of after your testimony cometh the testimony of earthquakes and fires and floods and destructions and vapors and fires of smoke and sickness and all those things. I think this is like the last testimony, not last, but kind of like another testimony from the youth of our day. Those who have been born to this time period are the noble youth of Zion. They're going to give a testimony and after this testimony meeting, I think we're going to see an increase in things. Increase in shakeups, not only natural disasters in the earth and the waves heaving themselves beyond its bounds, but also the foundations of our institutions are going to continue to be shaken and things are going to change in an interesting way. So, for example, um, the 3rd of October, uh, let me go back to that one. Yeah, the 3rd of October, 2023, the U.S. House of Representatives voted out their Speaker of the House, first in USA history. A house divided against itself shall not stand, right? It's also the same day of the Russia emergency alert nuclear test. First time ever. Next day, USA did their same nationwide ever test, seventh ever. Um, it's kind of a three-day advance warning, I believe, of the war that was going to happen three days later. This is the way the Lord speaks. Uh, they had the attack on Jerusalem on the 7th of October. We had triple earthquakes on three continents. Mexico, Papua New Guinea, and Afghanistan, 6.3, 6.7, and 6.3, respectively. It was also October 7th was Putin's birthday. Uh, 3 Nephi 22, 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. So... Um, Here's some precursors. Um, that's kind of laying the foundation for this. Uh, 29th of September, 2023, New York City, New York, receives the worst flooding in 75 years. Well, 75 years prior was 1948. That was the exact year when Israel became a nation. So I see the connections between New York and Israel. Um, I believe they are connected. What's happening in Israel is going to bring our nation into war and conflict and spread us thinner and create a lot of destruction and, and chaos politically, economically, socially. Um, here's the article from CNN. Record-setting rain overwhelmed New York City's sewer system Friday, sending a surge of flood water coursing through streets and into basements, schools, subways, and vehicles throughout the nation's most populous city. The water rose fast and furious, 
catching some commuters off guard as they slogged through Friday morning's rush hour. First responders jumped into action where needed, plucking people from stranded cars and basements, filling like bathtubs. More rain fell in a single day than New York's John F. Kennedy International Airport, nearly eight inches than any other since 1948. A month's worth of rain fell in Brooklyn in just three hours, as it was socked by some of the storm's most intense rainfall rates Monday morning. So here's some of the significance of that day. 29th of September 2023 was exactly 100 years to the day when Israel was allowed to begin gathering in, when the Jews were, were allowed to begin gathering in Jerusalem. This was known as the Mandate for Palestine. Before it was the UN, it was the League of Nations. League of Nations started things up um, 2020. Uh, it wasn't until 29th of September 2023 that it, the mandate was in force. And it was in force until 15th of May 1948, and I think that's the day that Israel declared independence and became a nation. But this was the beginning date. Now, I have a great uh, link I'll put in my video description about where I got this information and how I saw it. There was another uh, person who was like a evangelist Christian who posted this, and I give him credit for all that he saw, but I'm just kind of reiterating what he pointed out. He said the Jews counted their Sabbaths, and in the Mosaic Law, they would count their Sabbaths. Well, they had to have the land to count the land, to count the Sabbath years, their sabbatical years. They counted seven years. Every seven was a Sabbath, and they're supposed to let the land rest, and there are some implications for every seven years. Um, and then you have seven seventies is a group. Seven times seven was 49. So after 49 years, the 50th year was what was to be known as a Jubilee year. And in the Jubilee year, they were supposed to let all the slaves go free and forgive all debts. And I think if they didn't do this, then there was going to be cursings. Just like when we don't observe the Sabbath, the cursing part of that is war, okay? We have ignored God in our USA nation for many years now, cast him out of our schools and places. We can't even say the name of God. We can't pray, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so now the cursings, the covenant cursings are going to come. Um, so I'm not sure on this, but someone has shared with me that if you don't do the Jubilee year like you're supposed to, it becomes a cursing. And that's why the Jews have had wars on these dates of 50 years, the exact date almost, or the year for sure. Um, so the first Jubilee year, you take 50 years from 1923, you get the 6th of October, 1973. That was the first 50 year in the land. That was the Yom Kippur War. Now, I just briefly studied that on Wikipedia. From what I understand, it was all Arab nations attacked the Jewish nation of Israel, and they had the Sinai Peninsula. They actually won. But then a couple years later, they're like, all right, we're going to appease you. We'll give you back your land, see if that appeases you, and didn't really do what they were hoping. Um, so they own the, Egypt owns the Sinai Peninsula. Now you go another 50 years from the Yom Kippur War start date. The full 50 years are completed from the start date on the 6th of October, 2023. So the very next day, once it's completed, you have the next second Jubilee year, 7th of October, 2023, end of the Feast of Tabernacles. Israel is attacked again, worst attack in 50 years. And it was Hamas attacking Israel. They became at war again. Um, even Governor DeSantis of Florida recently said in a news article that this is the worst war that Israel has had since the Yom Kippur War. So you have U.S. politicians saying it. I don't know if they understand the significance of the Jubilee year and how this relates to the scriptures and how this relates to, you know, a lot of these other things like closure of temples, the 1290 days, um, the, the 50 years. It's just interesting how God is doing his work and people don't even know what they're doing and saying sometimes. Well, now the Jews have been in that land for 100 years. So this person who shared a YouTube video about this 100 years said the Holy Spirit led him to this uh, section of Genesis chapter 21. And the comparison is very I think it's true. It's very uh, eye-opening to look at how the Lord does this down to the day. Uh, so Genesis 21, verse 3. <clears throat> this is the King James Version of the English Bible. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. 
And Abraham circumcised his son, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. So, the birth of Isaac happened 100 years after Abraham was born. And then you have circumcision eight days after. So, what happened? The birth of Israel, 29th of September, 2023. They've been in the land 100 years. Eight days later, you have this circumcision of blood of Israel being attacked. Uh, interesting, huh? So he didn't talk about the circumcision in eight days because the guy who produced the video produced it before the October 7th. I saw this afterward, but um, might be some kind of uh, comparison there. It's interesting how it was exactly eight days later when Israel was attacked. Um, so he said it represents kind of like the fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant, that there would be a promised son born to him. So to us, I think in New Jerusalem, and how this relates to New York, this is fulfillment of God's covenant that he's going to raise up New Jerusalem. We're going to have a new city, a new capital city. He's going to raise up a king unto us. Well, he has, which is Christ. And he is now starting to cleanse the land so that the land can be prepared for his return. So uh, it symbolizes, I believe, the birth of Isaac to Abraham and also birth of New Jerusalem and Jerusalem, both the temporal and the spiritual. Um, the other thing that's interesting is we had this first ever uh, nationwide emergency alert test in Russia simulating nuclear attack across 11 time zones of its country, October 3rd, 2023, simulating 70% of Russian housing stock and life support uh, facilities being destroyed and full mobilization, which I assume means all of Russia's able-bodied men are called up to war. Uh, here's the article on it from metro.co.uk. Again, I will put these links in the video description. Um, I will make errors from time to time, so if there are errors to this, I will put that in the video description as well to, so as to avoid having to record, re-record it. Another interesting thing that was reported around this time frame was <clears throat> Russia trying to mark uh, Putin's birthday with the test of what they call the Chernobyl nuke that can fly for weeks on end. And they had tested this Baruvishnik, however you say it, missile, four, 13 times. Apparently the 14th was successful, dubbed the Flying Chernobyl. It's not just any old nuclear missile. It's a nuclear missile powered by a nuclear reactor. So I don't know how that works, but apparently <laughs> that's what the news is reporting. And it says, satellite photos and aviation data suggest preparations are underway for a new test or one that has already taken place, the New York Times reports. So uh, I heard it happened like a day or two before his birthday, but um, has a range of over 14,000 miles. There's a little article about it. We have the other precursor, October 3rd, 2023, the U.S. House of Representatives voted out their Speaker of the House first in USA history. Here's the link on that from Fox News. McCarthy ousted as Speaker for the first time in the history of the House of Representatives. Matthew chapter 12, 25. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So our house is now divided, literally. We can't pass any appropriations bills, no new spending, no new laws until they have a Speaker of the House. And it also has implications for the secession of the presidency because the Speaker of the House, as such, is the third in line for secession of the presidency. Um, and the next one is Senate pro tempore. So there's some constitutional crises that would emerge if um, that needed to happen to be invoked the secession. Um, another interesting one, October 3rd, 2023, one of the largest healthcare worker strikes in USA history. Over 70,000 Kaiser healthcare workers went on strike that day, 60,000 in California. Kind of reminds me of uh, what happened during COVID. I think it could be a foreshadowing of more sickness and plagues and scourges, DNC 45, 31, 33. <clears throat> there shall be men standing in that generation that shall not pass until they shall see an overflowing scourge for a desolating sickness shall cover the land. Now that's talking about the times of the Gentiles being fulfilled in verse 30. It says that, but my disciples shall stand in holy places and shall not be moved. But among the wicked men shall lift up their voices and curse God and die. And there shall be earthquakes also in diverse places and many desolations. 
yet men will harden their hearts against me, and they will take up the sword one against another, and they will kill one another. So I believe the times of the Gentiles will were fulfilled on the day of closure of temples, 26 of March, 2020. And we saw an overflowing scourge cover the land, which is the earth, and that was COVID. The holy places were closed. The temples and the meeting houses were closed for a period of time. It was our homes that became the holy places. And then we saw civil unrest in the George Floyd riots and other areas over COVID restrictions, vaccinations, to vax, to not to vax, all those different issues that came about. Polarization of society started killing each other. I think that's just the beginning. Um, here's the article on the emergency alert that the three-day advance warning that the USA did. It was the seventh ever test of the emergency system, and it was the third test of the wireless way of doing it. Uh, this is from CBS News. So I think this is the Lord giving us a three-day advance warning and telling us numbers like 10, this is the 10th month, like the Ten Commandments. You have the seventh test, like the seven days of the week, supposed to honor the Sabbath. You have an, a three-day advance warning before the um, war, and you have the third ever test of the wireless alerts. A sign of three is a sign from God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Trinity, right? As a lot of uh, Christians believe. So also on that day, Attack of Jerusalem, 7th of October, 2023, triple earthquake, which I mentioned in Mexico, Papua New Guinea, and Afghanistan, Putin's birthday. Now, if you take those um, days, 45 days, you split them out into 15 and, and 30, you get the testimony meeting, worldwide day of testimony meeting scheduled for 7 p.m. East Mountain Time uh, today. Um, after your testimony cometh the testimony of earthquakes and fires and floods. That's DNC 8888 area. Uh, easy to remember, 8888. Um, also, we have November 21st, 1620 was the Mayflower Compact. 400 years later, 1620, you add another three years, maybe some kind of three-year advance warning, mercy, you get this year, uh, November 21st, 2023. Don't know why the extra three years, there's some symbolism in that. There's some layers of meaning I haven't fully unraveled and been able to explain in a great way, but um, I think that date is significant because it happens to be the actual end of the 45 days. Also interesting, if you take the old style date, it was a conversion from Julian calendar to Gregorian. Under the Julian calendar, 1620, it was, it's called OS here. I have underlined it, which is old style date. That was the Julian calendar. It was November 11th, which is also Veterans Day. Interesting connection, right? Um, but if you go to our art calendar, Gregorian day would be November 21st. So don't know if that's significant, but just thought I'd point that out. Um, and this, I believe, represents the temporal transfiguration of the earth. Here's kind of an uh, overview of that from my prior video. Uh, you can go watch that if you want. I encourage you to understand this because the earth is transfiguring spiritually. The earth has a spirit, uh, and it's going to, it is trans figuring temporally, and that's why we're going to see natural disasters. Um, so the earth descended from celestial to terrestrial in the Garden of Eden, and then after the fall, telestial, which is where we're living. And we had the baptism of by water, which is the flood. We're going to have the baptism by fire of the Holy Ghost when Christ comes again, representing temporal judgment, Armageddon, baptism by fire, see Moses 748. There's a veil there when the Christ comes. It says the veil of the covering of the temple that hideth the earth will be removed. Um, that is when the earth ascends into the millennium, a thousand years of peace. Satan will be bound. DNC 6321, when the earth shall be transfigured, even according to the pattern which was shown unto mine apostles upon the mount, of which account the fullness ye have not yet received. So, uh, and then at the end of that millennium, We'll have the battle of Gog and Magog, and then it will ascend again to a celestial kingdom. Time will be no more. The earth will become a Urim and Thummim, and God will have completed his work. So if you are prepared, you shall not fear. Don't fear. Be happy, because this means the cleansing of Babylon and the worldly in preparation for the second coming. Preparation for the rise of New Jerusalem and the establishment again of Zion here upon the earth when there will be a thousand years of peace 
and plenty and rest. I know that Jesus is the Christ. He is our Redeemer, our Savior of the world. And I share this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.